I'm in Manhattan Beach, California with Annette Ramirez and as you can see she has quite the story. So why don't you tell us first how you landed up Sure. in this chair. Absolutely. I had gone to the doctor who found a very large fibroid on my uterus and I'd ha been having some medical issues. So I decided to have a full hysterectomy um, on August 1st, 2012. I went into the hospital expecting to get out on August 2nd. Um, on August 2nd, I was feeling a lot of pain. I was having a lot of medical issues and they decided to keep me an extra night. But unbeknownst to me, the doctor had cut my colon during surgery. Um, and that's why I was in such pain the next day. Um, by Friday, they discovered that he had cut the colon, but the previous night while I was in the hospital, he thought I had gas from the anesthesia, so he had ordered an enema. So on Friday, when they discovered the cut colon, um, it had been more than 40 hours, and my body became completely septic. Um, they had to put me into a medically induced coma for four months, and during that time, they amputated all four of my limbs. Um, additionally, I had necrotizing fasciitis, which burnt my skin from the inside out. So not only was I a victim of sepsis, but I was also a burn victim. So I spent nine months at the burn unit in Torrance. Um, and after that, I was transferred to Long Beach Memorial where I went through physical therapy, hoping to get me up on prosthetics and get me going. But unfortunately, the skin graft started to break down. So I ended up in the wound unit at Long Beach for a year. I was in the hospital for about two years. So the reason I wanted to talk to you is that <clears throat> you, you come across as the cheeriest I mean, with everything you've been through, your smile, you're at a concert, you're doing things, you have such an active life. And I, ever since meeting you, I've just been trying to kind of get my mind around what was in your head when you woke up. I mean, I, I've had times where I couldn't walk or I've worked with other artists who have had spinal injuries, but, you know, to wake up and your legs are gone, your arms are gone, how... I. I have tried so many times to imagine what was going on in your head, so why don't you tell us what was going on in your sure. head? Sure. I think when I first made the realization, it didn't come around to me. I couldn't really wrap my arms around it either. Um, I was so heavily sedated for so long that um, I don't think I was quite really aware of everything until a year later while I was still in hospital care and starting to try to walk and try to feed myself and all these things weren't happening for me. I had to come to grips with it in the hospital and just realize that once I get out, I had to basically reinvent myself. And that's what my doctor told me. But I keep going back and thinking, of that first time that you looked in the mirror? Yeah, it was difficult for me to even look in the mirror. Um, for one thing, I couldn't stand, so I couldn't see my legs, but I could see my arms. And I can recall um, just trying to put on a sweatshirt that was long sleeves and seeing how long the sleeves were mm -hmm. and thinking, oh my gosh, my arms were that long and now look at this. And I basically could see my legs just on the bed and when I would start to put on prosthetics during um, physical therapy, I really couldn't see the ends of the legs because the prosthetics were on. Um, but that took me a while and actually it continues today when I'm taking a shower and I get out of the shower and I see what I look like and it's it's a hard reality. Do you, do you have dreams where you're still? I'm always in my dreams. I'm fully bodied, fully 
able to do everything and anything. Yeah. So do you ever wake up and go, oh, that was... Like I, like, I have dreams with my parents in them and they're both dead, and I'll wake up and thought, oh, well, that was sort of a nice memory of that I was with my mom, right. I was with my dad. You were with your legs. Right, right. And, and that's true, but I try not to harbor on it because I, I, I know this is my reality now. And if I keep thinking about the past and how I was, it's not going to help me moving forward. You and I have had conversations before, and you sort of say, well, you sort of are thankful to God for this situation because it could have been worse or you right. could be dead. And I think if I was in that situation, I would be sort of cursing. Yeah. <laughs> like, why me when there's horrible, genuinely evil people in the world? There are. There so, are. so I'm just curious. I'm curious how you get strength from this. Um... I think I draw strain from the fact that for some reason or another, I'm still here. There were, were many code blues um, with doctors rushing and um, I, I still am so thankful that somebody or something, however God you want to call it, has kept me here for a reason. And I was only given a 3% chance. And I feel that there is more things for me to do in this world. And, and I want to do them. And I really do hope that I am serving as an example of, of just keep trying. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Because I think if my family would have given up on me and I, or my friends, and I didn't have any strength to pull from them or from the people in my church, maybe I wouldn't have survived. So do you think the, the morning you went into the hospital Yes. and you were expecting to be out in two the days, next day. the next day, if someone had said to you, this was going to be your life, do you, do you think you would have thought you had the strength to deal with all of it? No. But you do. I, you know what, though? I don't think you recognize the strength that you have until God puts you in that position. Well, it's kind of amazing. You're, I, just, I just find you amazing. I find you amazing. Well, thanks for talking to me. I know it's Absolutely. a lot of personal stuff, but I appreciate it. I appreciate this opportunity. Thanks. Thanks, Ted.